Good morning. I wasn't expecting to be the speaker today. We had another plan, uh, but things fell through, so I'm kind of the fallback. Uh, I talked to Mr. Latham about it on Monday. I said, I've, I've got his talk on Thursday, and I don't, don't, don't know what I'm going to do. And he said, tell about the raft trip. They'll love it. Uh, Mr. Latham is the voice of wisdom, so I'm taking his advice. Some of you have heard maybe bits and pieces about this trip, and some of you haven't. Uh, here's the raft. So in 1970, I built this raft in the mountains of West Virginia, and then I put it in a U-Haul truck, and I took it to the Ohio River, and I floated down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers from West Virginia to New Orleans. That's about 1,500 miles, and it took three months. I wasn't alone. My wife and my year-old daughter were with me, and here's a photo of the two of them just before we started out. And then here's a photo of the raft with the three of us. This was taken in southern Illinois, very near a cabin where Abraham Lincoln lived when he was growing up. And then here's another photo. That's me in the back. You can barely see my head. And in the front, that's my wife, my dear wife, Anne, and baby Sarah, who was not quite one year old. Um, these are the best and only photos I have of this expedition. It was an amazing adventure. It was incredibly beautiful traveling on those two rivers. Uh, over and over, just unbelievably beautiful scenes like this and incredibly beautiful dawns and sunsets. It was also far more dangerous than I realized it was going to be. When we started out, stupid me, I didn't know about the river barges like this one. And this is a, this is a, a fairly small one. These barges can be a quarter of a mile long. They, can't, they can barely steer around the corners in the river. They have no maneuverability other than that. And it takes them a mile or more to stop. And at the start of the trip, all I had on the raft were two paddles to try to move the raft out of the way. And we had some very close calls. One of them was, one of these barges was tied up at the, on the shore of the river, and uh, it wasn't moving, but the current was moving very fast. I was trying to get out and around the barge, and I didn't quite make it, and the raft got caught right on the corner of the barge and pinned there by the current. If we'd hit the middle of the front of the barge, we would have gotten swept under, and that would have been the end of all of us. Uh, but we got pinned on the corner, and we were, God, thank you, God. We were lucky because uh, uh, a tugboat, uh, a free tugboat, one without a, a, a job, uh, happened to come by and saw we were in trouble and came over and pulled us off. Uh, that was the worst and most dangerous moment we had. There were a few others. Um, so we had, we had some really close calls. Uh, this trip was also, for me, a huge learning experience. We were doing this at the end of the Vietnam era. And that was a time when Americans were just really angry at each other and, and fiercely disagreeing about the Vietnam War. And that, that time was not completely unlike right now when so many Americans are feeling a lot of anger about politics and this coming election. So uh, floating, through, floating down the river and through the south, I wasn't sure how people would treat us. Uh, but people who lived... People who lived along that river were fascinated that we were actually doing this, and they liked it. So they'd get in their boats, and they'd come out to talk to us. And what we found was that people were just incredibly kind and generous and caring. They gave us over and over. They gave us money. They gave us food. They gave us baby clothes, um, anything they could think of that we could use. And they even gave us an outboard motor so that we could stay out of the way of the barges. So in that way, it was a wonderful experience, and it changed my, my view of human beings. 
It taught me that the great majority of people are very kind and good-hearted. Um, you know, as a nation, we got over the anger of that Vietnam period. And I'm, I keep hoping nowadays that the same thing will happen, that the goodness of human, of the, the great majority of human beings is going to get us past this period of anger that we're in right now. Anyway, it took us three months to get to New Orleans. It, it was an amazing trip, but it was also just a really nutty and dangerous thing to do. And now I still ask myself, why was I so crazy? And I'm still not sure I know the answer. There were several reasons, I think. The first was I had ambitions to be a writer. And I had the idea in my goofy brain that I needed to go on adventures that I could write about. It didn't really dawn on me that what real writers do is sit down on their butts and write. I was 26. I had already spent five years after college on other adventures, most of them hitchhiking around Latin America. Another reason, I had lived near the river in Cincinnati when I was growing up. I had loved reading Mark Twain's books about the river. And I guess I was imagining I could somehow relive those adventures. But most of all, as I look back, what I see is that what I was doing was trying to find myself. I was trying to figure out who I was, what I wanted in life, what mattered to me. You know, I really, I didn't know myself. And I spent those five years of hitchhiking around and, dr and drifting down the river thinking that by doing these adventures, I could, f I could somehow find out who I was. The truth is, I was looking in the wrong place. Buddha said, peace comes from within. Don't seek it without yourself. And Jesus said, God is within you. But I hadn't gotten that message. I was looking for the answer everywhere, except in here, in my own heart. The raft trip was a good adventure. I'm not saying it wasn't, but it didn't show me, it didn't tell me, it, it didn't tell me who I was. It didn't do what I was looking for. Um, about six months, not too long after the raft trip was over, I came to a real crisis in my life. I hit the wall. I suddenly had to recognize, I had to admit to myself that my life was going nowhere, that I was floundering around trying to find some meaning and not getting it, not fa and failing. And, I ha and facing up to that truth was really hard. It was like going into a really deep hole, a deep, dark hole. And most of all, what I had to face was that I'd been acting really, really selfish. That I'd been focusing on what I wanted and ignoring the needs of others around me. And that I'd been dragging my beautiful wife and my beautiful daughter along on my crazy and sometimes dangerous adventures. And God only knows why they stuck with me. To this day, I don't know why my gorgeous wife, Anne, had the patience to hang in there with me. But it did finally dawn on me that I'd been taking these two incredibly beautiful people and their love for granted. That I'd been so self-centered and so dumb, so blind, that I couldn't see that these two people were the best thing in my life and that what I needed to do was to be caring for them and not chasing my own goofy dreams. And when that, when that dawned on me in that moment, I felt a love that I'd, I'd never been in touch with before. I can't describe it. It was like a fire of warmth in my heart. And that love grew and grew. And in that moment, it became like a tidal wave that washed over me and just took control of me. And I found myself filled with a love and a strength and a joy and a light that I can't begin to describe. And then I was for a little, for a moment, I was like floating outside of my body and outside of my normal mind. And there was a light brighter than the sun. And the only thought I could have was, so this is what people mean when they talk about God. So that light, that experience 
lasted a few minutes, I don't know, 10 minutes, I don't know. But it transformed me and it transformed my life. And ever since then, my life has been filled with love and joy and strength. And that's how eventually I came to be wearing this collar and serving as the school minister in this community that I love and being able to tell you that I love you all. So our readings this morning talked about pilgrimage, about life being a journey where the goal is to find oneself. Paulo Coelho said, life is a long pilgrimage from fear to love. And Chimamanda Adichie said, I think you travel to search and you come back home to find yourself there. I think that's what my raft trip was. It was a search for the self that I didn't find till I came home and looked into my own heart. And when I finally did look into my own heart, I came to a spiritual waking up that was more meaningful than any, anything I could ever imagine. So that's the story about the raft trip, the story Mr. Latham advised me to tell. I hope it's helpful. I hope, you all, I hope you'll all find your own journey in life. I, ho I know you will. I hope it's a journey that, that's filled with love and joy and light. Thanks for listening. I do love you all.